This time tomorrow, we'll all be able to play X Defiant. So in a final pre-launch video, I wanted to detail a few things I hadn't quite gotten around to while I was away this past week. Changes from the last test session, new details about the game's cosmetics, and more. So today we're jumping into what you need to know. Do me a huge favor and drop a like as well. Make sure to subscribe for more X Defiant coverage here going into launch and beyond. Would love to have you in the community as we push towards 600,000 subscribers. But anyways, let's get into it. So firstly, what changed from just about a month ago with the test session that we last had? Well, the X Defiant team laid out a bit of the patch notes for what has changed since then and up front there's not a whole ton that's like game breaking or game altering things rather but some things that are definitely worth mentioning first some faction updates have been made or more so fixes the echelon faction is going to be back here for launch in the last test session we saw that it was taken offline because of an issue with the digital ghillie suit it would turn players invisible in a bad way not necessarily the way that it's actually supposed to cloak you but it just caused an unintended bug where player models were quite literally invisible so that is back dead sex spider bot ability is also returning so for the people that love or hate the face huggers either way get ready because it's going to be there for launch devices aka the grenades are less likely to fall at your feet now if you're using them immediately after respawning they said that it still can happen but they're still working on it so it might just be a less frequent bug but an adjustment here since the last update no less the net code there are some slight adjustments where occasionally after you died you could still run around in the world for a few seconds but now after you die you stay fully dead of course that's obviously how it should be working as intended and they also reduce the range between the highest ping and the lowest ping in matchmaking so now you'll be grouped with more players who have a more similar ping to you which is definitely nice that's the way that it should be again you end up stretching those matchmaking parameters and it creates imbalance balances in a lot of different categories. So with recently the discussion about how everything is going to be ping is king, connection based and everything like that, no skill based modifiers or anything with the last blog post we discussed here on the channel, that's just something that I think is great that we're kind of limiting it even further. Audio, they said there were a ton of audio improvements, but also they fixed an issue with killstreak VO lines playing at the beginning of every match and when you died. That was definitely something that I noticed, but I wasn't sure if it was just me going crazy or not. But then they also fixed a few things with the social menus as well, such as the Xbox players being able to see their friends list as primary friends in game, a few issues where if you suspended the game, you'd have an inability to use some of the social features and a few other smaller Xbox related items. Big picture, not a whole ton again in regards to gameplay changing or game altering things, but noteworthy things that I think should help the stability and overall feeling of the game. Frankly, that's kind of what I expected with a test session being playable just only a month ago. It was more so a demo than anything else. I mean, to end up having to restructure or anything in regards to making major gameplay changes from that point to when they wanted to launch. I mean, we've seen it with say COD betas in the past. That stuff is usually just a demo of what's going to be launched because they have to certify it gold and get it ready to go out. While there's no physical versions of the game, that same principle still has to apply where that time to finalize and submit everything has to be taken into account. So you're not gonna see a whole ton of gameplay changes as a result. But anyways, some big changes, some again, smaller. My biggest thing is that net code, reducing the range between the highest and lowest ping. I think that's probably the biggest part out of that update. And fingers crossed, it's definitely something that is noticeable that you don't have have too many connection issues once the game actually launches. But next, let's detail some of the microtransaction details, something that was addressed a few days back when I was out of town, but a very, very important mention. In a blog called X Defiant In-Game Purchase Philosophy, they detailed their plans for microtransactions, which from day one was mentioned that it would be there. That's been something that the dev team has been very open, very transparent with. And I mean, it's kind of inferred either way, since it's a free to play game. The studio has to make money somehow to pay for development, upkeep, and further support from the publisher to be deemed a worthwhile investment. So it was bound to happen, but it's always been a matter of can they do it well? Will it still be player first and other factors like that? And that seems to be their intention still based off of this blog post. They mentioned there's no pay to win. They said that they want to make sure that everything that is purchasable does have an equal way to earn it in game. The thing that they give an example of is the dead sec faction where you can end up purchasing that, but you can unlock it in game by acquiring seven hundred thousand XP and if it was anything like back in last year last summer with the beta that was very easy to unlock and to obtain. I don't remember if it was 700,000 XP or what the denomination of was it, but it was something that went by very quickly. So yes, you can sort of do that convenience of paying for it, but it also shouldn't take too long to begin with. And that's that's how I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to really spend any cash on that kind of stuff. I'd much rather just simply play and grind it out in game. They also stated they want to reward players playtime. And that's something that I feel like a lot of games don't really prioritize a lot anymore these days. They stated 
our goal is to be providing amazing customization options that reward all of the matches, victories, and even defeats that you can put into a game. As you play that one more match, all your time and energy will work towards unlocking content either through the battle pass or challenges. And they detailed some of these things that will be rewarding you for your time are free battle pass rewards, in-game challenges, both daily and weekly, Ubisoft Connect challenges, weapon mastery, they said with regular updates. So I'm curious to see what that means, like if we'll see seasonal updates for more mastery camos and challenges to go along with weapon mastery or if there's just going to be ever increasing difficulty challenges that maybe they have enough planned that even if you grind a ton you still won't reach them for months on end who knows but anyways they also detail there's going to be community participation rewards like twitch drops giveaways and in-game events so i'm here for all of that i love stuff that rewards the player for their time i think that is incredibly important for especially a live service game they also detailed they have a focus on customization where they want player identity to be at the forefront of cosmetics things that are important to the player character skins, weapon skins, MVP player animations, player cards, emoji packs, and more coming in the future have been detailed. When they say weapon skins, though, I do hope that it is something that is like actually usable for all weapons, not specific weapons like a blueprint or something like that. That's just me personally. I would much rather grind out or even in a shop format, pay their denominated X coins or whatever they're going to call it for something that I can use for every single weapon, not just one singular weapon. But we'll see how that works in time. And they said also finally that it's going to be something that they are receptive to feedback, to ideas of the community, and that they're going to be evaluating it over time. Stated, like we said, we know this is an important topic, a topic that demands reflection and evaluation. As X Defiant progresses, we will be listening to your feedback as well as players surveys and in-game player data constantly evaluating to make sure we are providing fair and engaging customization options and that again is something that i hope we see going further into the future that this evaluation over time does still try to be as player first as possible that is what we see a lot with say cod cosmetics i don't ever buy anything in the shop but like for those people that do like to buy stuff you're usually bundled with a lot of crap you don't care for a lot of things that are overly monetized three thousand cod point bundles upwards sometimes in more rare cases but like to pay twenty dollars plus for like a weapon skin or something like that like that's not really player first and i get that's of course the optional microtransaction model as is all of this kind of stuff but it's just one of those things that i think is a good case study in trying to lean too far into pulling as much cash out as possible if x defiant can end up having a shop with good and worthwhile items but also plenty of rewards and things that you can end up just simply grinding out i personally don't see it as much an issue as if you had a price tag associated with the game and more so pushing you towards buying even more things so again it is a very fine line to try and balance and it's one of those things that we'll just have to wait and see but this time tomorrow we should have our first looks at what all is going to be upcoming here so that is where we're going to wrap it up just wanted to fill you guys in on this information here again as a part of our final pre-launch video here for rex defiant but that is where we're going to wrap it up. Before we do, though, make sure to check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for what I firmly believe are the best blue light glasses on the market. I've worked with these guys for three years now and cannot recommend them enough. The most lightweight, comfortable, and durable frames on the market as far as I've used, and I definitely think they've helped my daily productivity. The full transparency, they're a bit more of an investment, but I do think your vision is absolutely worth investing into, especially if you're like me, you're looking at a monitor, phone, or you're gaming for a good chunk of your day, which, if you're looking forward to X Defiant, might be you in the upcoming days. If you guys would like to learn more, at the very least, I'd recommend checking out their website where they can better break down the science and all the specifics way better than I could, but what I can personally say is I'd highly recommend them. So if you'd like to learn more, check the link in the description below. And if you want to pick something up for yourself, use code ESPRESSO to get 10% off your entire order. But for now, that's what we're going to call it. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of the changes, the microtransactions, and the cosmetic philosophy of X Defiant? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to almost a single thing, running all things X Defiant. And I'll see you here tomorrow and beyond for a busy, busy launch window. Looking forward to it, though. So take care and peace.